We don't know what post-COVID-19 is going to look like, but we do know there will continue to be a demand for well-staged keynote presentations. Not just webinars and not just teaching sessions, but presentations where you get the impact of a speaker connecting with the audience and sharing powerful ideas. And then it's great to be uplinking to some 500 docs and leaders. And I life. think today what's changed is you and I as leaders have to find a way to help people reduce their anxiety and deliver on that hopefulness, that optimism they have that the future will be better than the past pre-COVID. Now, everybody says, what's important now? What's changed? What's different? Different? What are the, the protocols and the safety procedures? But here's the question we forget to ask. What always matters? What hasn't changed? And relationship and quality and value and service, those are all staples that haven't changed. So you've got to be able to hold that dynamic going forward about what's changed, but what becomes the foundation, not the anchor, but the foundation from the past that will allow us to go successfully into the future. Sean Green had no title and yet he truly was a leader. And today, a lot of business leaders don't ask the second question. And that is what? Well, let me tell you why I believe this group, why you today that I'm talking to are going to be successful. It's because you've done it before. And confidence is based on the ability to replicate. Now, I know in financial services, we hear that all the time. Past performance is no indication of future performance. When it comes to human beings, that's not true. Past performance is the primary indicator of future performance. Vision and their trust to their leaders, and those are the soft things that make up culture. This is just one of the three very powerful and cost-effective. The, the dispersion of Crestcom leaders all over the world today. Uh, the 90 countries that Crestcom has taught in, I've been so grateful to be a part of the faculty. And in my I've been telling my clients in crisis, especially today, that experimentation and agility trump planning and process. Hmm. And so when people are very focused on what needs to be done and why it needs to be done, they become very inventive. And unfortunately, historically, structure can prevent that from happening because people don't feel empowered to try things and experiment. And if they work, keep doing them. If they don't work, adjust them or quit doing them. So you're exactly right. I, I think that uh, we need to remember that most things in life aren't or their and you know it's structure and culture but structure is pretty easy culture is very hard and what i want you to remember is that better always beats best i used to think that becoming the best at what you did in your profession would be the hardest professional accomplishment of all but over these last 30 plus years as i've worked with some of the, the best organizations in america i found that as hard as it is to become the best in your field your category or your market space What's even harder is to become the best and continue to improve. Because you see, when you're number three, you, you emulate number two. When you're number two, you copy number one. But when you're at the top of your game, when you are the true leader, there is no one to innovate or emulate. You're on your own.